Welcome back folks. Today is laser day and by that I mean I'm getting that hole cut for the laser so we can actually start using it a little bit more. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to take this piece off because in this case we can actually take it off and just set it on our sketchbook. Then I can go around and trace all the features that are here and then take my calipers and get accurate measurements of it before we take it into shaper for modeling. To do that I got to take this piece off which means removing the fan and that removes these four pieces here. So I might be able to get away with this without removing the actual fan itself if I can leave these screws in place. No luck. As soon as I take this off, it wants to pull the fan out. Actually, what we can do is just re-put these back on. That way we don't lose them and we can keep our fan in place. So now we've got our part. So now that we have our piece off, I've got my little sketchbook here. I'm just going to set it on one of the lines that already exist. This doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, we're just using this as a reference. I'm also going to trace out the mounting points and then the inner circle here. And because I know this would bore most people, I'm not going to do a whole in-depth SketchUp and design process in this video. For those that are interested, I will have the full video in our Patreon. So now we've got a basic uh, you know, plan and sketch up for Falcon 2 Pro. Let's get these measurements into Shaper. And I'm just getting this all designed up in Shaper 3D. That has been my kind of go-to modeling platform for the last year and a half or so. And exporting it into Orca Slicer, we're gonna print it out on the Adventure 5M Pro from FlashForge. This was sliced at a 0.26 millimeter layer height too. Like if we had done a little bit less, we probably could have got a cleaner outcome, but all right, this is a uh, version one. Let's see how it fits. Version one is mounted. The one thing I need to figure out though is will our hose fit over the top of it. So this is the hose that they supplied. Essentially it just has to be able to slide over and this clip has to have enough room to latch. I mean yeah that works well actually. What I have to do now is design another piece that's essentially the same size as this. Uh, on the outer side it's just going to be a through piece that the other end can connect to. And I think I'm going to design that in three pieces. One that will go through that wall from this side and can be screwed in from this side. And that will have a piece probably two and a half or three and a half inches. And then I'll have another one on the other side that the piece can slide into. And then that can get mounted and essentially it'll be like a I'll print a TPU gasket or something. That way this is just kind of connected to the wall. There'll be a port on the other side that I can use a lot of this hose for because there's quite a bit of it. I think that's going to work well. Now that I've talked it out with everybody else, I'm going to go put that plan into action. In order to accurately figure out where I have to place this though, I have to move the laser back over. There. You can see we're going to be in this general area. I don't want to get too close to the stud, but I do need to get close enough to the stud that I'm going to be able to use it. That looks good. I'm going to make a general top and bottom mark. Now we can move the laser back out of the way. All right, so before I go and let a bunch of cold air come through here, I'm gonna design a part that actually fits through this hole so we know we've got something that we can put in there to seal it all up. You'll notice that throughout this uh, screen capture here, I'm copying and pasting this a couple times. I'm using it for the gasket and TPU. 
as well as the actual part that's going to go through the wall, which we're looking at right now. That I'm going to print out of PETG High Flow on the Adventure 5M Pro. You can see here the TPU gasket being printed out right now on A1 Mini 2. Essentially, the piece from the Adventure 5M right here is going to go through the wall, and then we'll print out a mating piece that's on the other side of the wall in our third bay, and that will essentially friction fit into the tube or into the, the pipe and we'll get screwed in from the other side so it's sealed off from any critters and such. All right, our TPU print just finished up and I don't print in TPU much, but there's one thing that I remember and that's if you let it sit on the build plate for it to cool down too much, it does not want to come off. So it's just finished and I'm gonna try and get this off best I can. Obviously bending it probably does no good. Let's see if we can maybe just get underneath it. Like that. So now we've got our little TPU gasket. I will probably put this side against the plastic part just to, since it's a little bit less slippery. The textured PEI coating kind of gives it a smooth, textured but smooth, you know, finish. So it's not as uh, rubber-like as this side is. All right, this is all finished up. We can take it off the build plate. Let's see how these supports come off. Let's see if we can just break them off. Oh yeah. I mean those just came right off. The uh, bottom surface, you can see there was definitely some spots where uh, we could have benefited from the supports being a little bit closer, but two hours and 30 minutes, I think this will work just fine, assuming this fits through the hole. We've got our part. That is gonna work awesome. I mean there's just a tiny bit of a uh, clearance here. So obviously this side is going to be the one that sticks through the wall here. It'll go in like that and then there's going to be another piece on the other side similar to this that can essentially friction fit over here and get screwed into the wall. So they'll both be screwed in from both directions. So his gasket should fit around this guy like that. and we can put a couple screws in it. These aren't anything special. These actually are just gonna hold into the T111 here. All right, now that we've got this side secured to the wall, I wanna make a cap that goes over this to prevent any cold air from coming through when we're not using it. And I also need to make the other side. And like I mentioned before, I'm just reusing that original sketch to create our cap and our part for the other side. Printing in PETG HF on the 5M Pro. I haven't been using this machine much for PLA, but it has been rocking it with PETG and all the other higher temp filaments. I'm using A1 Mini 2 now to print out that cap out of Inland's BU Red PLA. I picked this up from Micro Center, like I mentioned a few weeks ago, and I've printed a couple things out of it so far, and I like the color. First test, that fits over there a little bit loose. We could have made it a little bit tighter. It does fit over there. Definitely blocks out the cold air that's coming in. So I think what I'm gonna do, instead of this being like 69 and a half, we'll put it up to like 69 and three quarters or 69.8. See if we can get a tighter fit over there. Cap number two, I shrunk this one down this original one was 70.5 millimeters on the inside to make room for this being 70 millimeters here. So I made this one 70.2 on the inside. That is a tighter fit. And I also reduced the uh, fillet on the inside from two millimeters down to one just to make sure it seats against this a little bit better. But there is, you know, cold air coming in from there with that cap on though. We are looking good. And all that's left now is to get the mating side onto the other side. I've got about a half hour left on that print and then we'll get that installed. 
So far, that initial layer that's laying down on top of the support looks far better than the original one we did. Nothing's really lifting up, causing that rough surface that we saw on the first piece. All right, second piece off. Supports come right off. Well, let's go see how this fits. So essentially, this part here should just slide into there just like that. That is gonna work awesome. Let's get some screws in this guy. All right, now that we've got everything into place, let's get our laser into place. And we could have gone a little higher, about half an inch higher on the laser side than we are on the actual wall. But I think with the flexible hose, what I can do is just cut a one inch piece or a one and a half inch piece and we should still be good to go with that. All right. Slide it on to our laser. So I do still need to get a clamp that can go around here. One thing I'm gonna wonder about, we do have some cold air coming in through the laser itself, but overall not bad. I still wanna figure out a way that we can cap that off. It's, you know, so no critters or anything come through. Maybe we can make something to cap off the other side. But for now, that's where this is gonna sit. Let's get this guy booted up and see how it works. Can boot it up, turn the key and press the power button. It should start going through a homing sequence once we get it connected to the computer. All right, so I've connected it to the computer. It's gone through its homing sequence. And we can go to camera and go to Falcon. Uh, that's FaceTime camera, you don't want to see me. Let's go to Falcon camera, update overlay. And this will show us, if I click it again, you'll see my hand inside of there. Essentially, this is just gonna show us a general outline of where this piece is. I wasn't able, upon initial calibration, I wasn't able to get it perfectly lined up, so it is a little bit skewed. Let's do a frame to make sure it's gonna be where we think it's gonna be, and all I really care about is this. So this is kind of the best shot you're gonna get with what we've got going on here. In order for the machine to work, the lid has to be closed unless I find some other magnet, but that kind of defeats the purpose of this entire test, which is seeing how the exhaust works. Let's go to the other side and see if we can see anything. So we've got the, the hose hooked up up top, and that right now is just running out of this. You can feel the air pressure coming out of here though. That's really good. Like really good air pressure for that small fan. For now, I'm just kind of draping it down and it can exhaust out the garage door. There is a, a little gap down there. This is uninsulated space, so it breathes pretty well. Yeah, and the smell of exhaust or the smell of the laser in here, I don't really even notice it, which is really nice. Uh, out there, I could definitely smell it when I got towards that hose. So I think this is gonna work really well. With everything running, it is a pretty loud machine, all things considering. I would say it's just as loud as the S1 Pro going, except without the you know enclosure. It'd be like if you left the door to the S1 Pro open. That uh, exhaust fan is pretty noisy. So that was without noise cancellation on the microphone and sitting about a foot away from the laser. We're four minutes and 50 seconds into the engraving. It's gonna finish up our logo here, then it'll cut it out. We can take a look at the results. All right, second one just finished up. I ran this one at 5,000 millimeters per minute at 18% power for the engraving, and then 700 millimeters per minute and 60% power for the cut. Still a little bit around the edges here. Probably bump that up to like 65 and we would be good to go. Can also play around with the engraving settings here. You can see this was at 6,000 millimeters per minute and this is at uh, 5,000. So the 5,000 runs slower so it engraves a little bit darker. Overall these came out pretty good. About 15 minutes to cut one of these out and it's a, probably about wallet size or a little bit bigger. Yeah, 
that was pretty spot on wallet size. Let's see what else this thing can do. I'm just throwing a piece of cork in there, like a cork coaster. I'm gonna see if we can engrave our logo on that. Should take about six minutes. Even at 10% power, that's going pretty deep based off of what I can see anyways. So that definitely went deeper into the coaster than I was anticipating it doing, but it came out really, really clean. So I am very pleased with that. Definitely gonna have to play around with these settings a little more because that was 4,500 millimeters per second at 10% power. So I don't know if dialing down the power a little bit would be better or if speeding up the engraving would be better, but I'm definitely gonna play around with that a little more. I've got a couple more of these coasters lying around. Next thing that I wanna do is see how it engraves into hardwood. And why not see how it cuts hardwood too? This is about three quarters of an inch of cherry. Just lifting that up before I move it into place because I don't want to crash into my piece. And I can use my little engraving block. I'm gonna set it to the cutting thickness. All right, so I've got it set up now to do 5,000 millimeters per minute for the engraving at 15% power. Then we're gonna try cutting this piece of uh, cherry out. Three passes, 75% power at 500 millimeters per minute. So that didn't cut through. That was how many passes here? Three passes at 75% power. With that said, I know this thing can cut three quarters, but I don't know how many passes it actually takes. I was able to get a successful cut most of the way through on the other side uh, of another engraving with doing three passes. So that's kind of why I figured three passes was gonna work on this. Maybe this is just a little bit thicker, a little bit denser on the inside. Who knows? What we do know is that it's really clean at engraving. We've got cherry there, it's 15% power. Took like six minutes. These take about six minutes and I probably could have sped this up a lot more considering how deep the engraving went. And this was about 15 minutes, a little bit larger. And the plywood isn't a you know clean surface, but I mean, yeah, I don't really have any complaints. It's got a couple different laser modes. Um, I also had them send me the rotary, so we'll be testing that out in another video. Uh, that's for engraving things like uh, tumblers, cups, stuff like that. I wanna try engraving on glass. So we've got our laser all set up in the corner now, all plumbed out through our little makeshift port back there. And I know I'm probably gonna get some questions like, why did you even bother remodeling that whole part when you could have just clamped the hose onto the side of the part that's already there and fed it out that hole? And to that I say, I don't know. Probably because somewhere in my head I went, it's better to have a smooth transition there than to have a kink in that corrugated hose, which already tends to cut down on the flow of air. So I figured as little of that corrugated hose that I could use, the better. The other reason is I needed to design the part that went through the wall anyway. So having this original part gave me a size and a, you know, a base plate and everything that's already there and ready to use. So that combined with the fact that I didn't want to have corrugated hose coming out of the machine and going straight down or taking that hard bend and then cutting down on the airflow, yeah, that's the reason why I decided to remodel that part. In the next video on the laser, we're gonna be getting some parts printed out for it. I want to test this guy out. This is the rotary kit that they sent over for it so we can engrave some tumblers. And so if you're into the laser stuff and the CNC engraving, the woodwork inside of it, I've got a little bit of that too on this channel. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows this is what you like seeing. And if you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on the next upload. Until next time, everybody, take care and happy lasering.